What does it take to be the fittest man on earth? I think it takes everything and more. I think it's being fully committed to the process day in and day out, going as far beyond your comfort zone as possible. It takes hurting, it takes loving, it takes healing, it takes recovering, it takes believing, it takes everything and nothing is guaranteed. I guess in theory I've been an athlete almost my whole life. My dad was a collegiate athlete. He played lacrosse at Brown University. I think prior to starting lacrosse though, I played a little bit of everything. When I first started CrossFit, I didn't even realize that it was a sport, to be honest. I thought it was just kind of a workout program that was gonna get me ripped, jacked, shredded, all the things that I wanted to be as a college-aged male. My name is Noah Olson. I'm gonna be a senior at the University of Miami. Soon after, though, I found out about the CrossFit Games and realized that it could be a competitive sport. At 19, when I walked into the CrossFit gym for the first time, I was a scrawny little kid that had no idea what I was doing, but there was an element of excitement that I got to try something new and test myself in a way that I never had. And I've gotten to the highest level of our sport. I've yet to win the games, but I've been close. And that whole process has not been easy. I think people that maybe haven't gotten a glimpse at the beginning of my journey could think that it has been, but it's been 10 years of just grinding. Since I started competing at the games in 2014, the last eight years have had a lot of ups and downs. I went into my first year, honestly just kind of being happy to have qualified and having absolutely no expectations. And then in the middle of that first year, I found myself in first place winning the CrossFit Games, which blew my mind because I was competing against a lot of guys that were like my idols at the time. Rich Froning, Jason Kalipa, Chris Spieler. But by the end of that weekend, I finished in eighth place, had a couple hiccups, but that gave me the confidence that, hey, I, I could actually be really, really good at this. That was kind of the first realization of that. I came in second place in 2019, which was my best finish ever. I've had a couple fourths, fifths, eighths sprinkled in there. Um, and I'm hoping that this year, 2021, is gonna be the best ever. I've been pretty fortunate that in my entire career, I haven't had any really major injuries. Little tweaks here and there for sure. I think everybody that's pushing themselves experiences that. This year in particular, I've had a, a few different health issues which are unique and unfortunate, but it is what it is and it takes what it takes. I'm still fully committed to the process. I tweaked my shoulder a couple weeks before competing at the qualifier for the finals. And I did everything that I could to rehab it. I got worked on three or four times a week, tried dry needling, which I hadn't really had much exposure to, did a ton of rehab physically. I got to the point where I was able to compete and I don't know if adrenaline masked it in the competition, but I felt pretty good throughout the weekend of the qualifier was hoping that that would lead to it just being over and not an issue leading into games prep. But there is still some lingering discomfort in there. And again, in my mind, rather than dwell on the fact that I tweaked it as much as I wanna go back and maybe erase that one lift that did it to me, that's impossible to do. So all I'm gonna do is focus on doing everything that I possibly can to make sure that I'm gonna be good to go on game day. Obviously, my fiance Joanne, has been the most awesome, supportive partner that I could have even imagined going through this journey. One thing that I found myself doing in competition just naturally, I would 
text her before an event and say like, this one's for you or this one's for us. And I don't know, for whatever reason, that gave me a little bit of comfort that I'm not doing it just for the leaderboard. You know, it's, it's for a bit of a deeper purpose. When I am at my most nervous, she's the one that I'm able to express that to and she kind of helps quell the nerves and keep me in a good headspace. So when I do get out onto the competition floor, by that time, usually the nerves are gone, but it still is just very comforting and centering for me to find her, just lock eyes with her and know that she's there. And it kind of reminds me that no matter how this workout goes, I'm gonna be okay, because she'll be waiting for me when it's over. Alongside Joanne, I've had awesome support from my family from the very beginning. My parents both got into CrossFit. They both do it now. My dad actually owns a CrossFit gym now, which is pretty cool. My whole extended family, actually, they had a text thread going at the West Coast Classic, and it was really cool to see my cousins, my uncles, my aunts, my grandma, my sister, all chiming in on there. Honestly, I think community is everything, as cliche as that sounds. I was having this conversation recently with somebody, and I said, imagine you won the CrossFit Games. You achieved your, your dream, your goal, and you go pick the gold medal up off the table, and you look up, and there's nobody in the stands. Does that mean anything to you? And to me, that wouldn't mean anything at all. The big meaning behind the success in my sport is being able to share that with all the people that I've been on the journey with. My community, the community within the gyms, you know, it's all made the process for me so enjoyable that it's been sustainable. I think if I didn't have groups of friends and family and training partners that have made the process as enjoyable as it has been, I don't think I'd still be doing what I'm doing now. It's not just about that gold medal for me, being able to win and be the champion is the ability to share that with my closest people, to have them be proud of me and the journey that we've all been on together. I want them to feel like it's been worth it. You know, there are sacrifices that I've made that have impacted the people that I love. And at the end of the day, I want them to be able to understand that it all led to that.